session of character modeling with me s'more aka steve moore and uh yeah so uh the number of subscribers has been ticking up i really appreciate that everybody that subscribes and likes these videos uh muchas gracias and uh yeah let's get on with it okay so the last session we uh went through the process of making some real time here using xgen and we'd focused on the short here so um so that was relatively easy this week we're going to step it up a notch and we're going to make some longer here and we're going to style it a little bit you know and i'm going to use an alternate um, method slightly different method for capturing the hair cards themselves out of xgen um, so we had grabbed the primitives um, and just converted those to to hair cards we're going to try um, using uh, the camera facing option for this this one and the advantage of that is we're going to get the normals um, from from you know directly from that op from that option there. All right. So so right now I'll turn off my guide head for a second. And so to make the long here, I took this shell here and I have broken it up into smaller chunks. Now the idea here is that we want to mimic the way. Um, the way that the uh, hair grows naturally, right? So, so we started with the short hair at the base, and now we're going to work our way up towards the this the part line, you know. So, you know, this these shells represent different layers of hair. So we're going to have this kind of hair growing. It we're going to focus in on this area here, and that's going to kind of grow over the top of the shorter hair that we've already made, and ultimately um, we would make the you know the part line you know from this this particular area and it would grow over that area right so that makes sense so you're kind of trying to build the hair up in layers as it would um, occur naturally um, so I'm using I'm using geometry so for xgen you you need some geometry to to um, extrude the hair from but uh, well, extrudes the wrong word to generate the hair um, you can actually make a complete hair shell and apply UV coordinates and use masks. So that is an option. I just, I just went for kind of creating the, the um, you know, subdividing my shell into the various clumps that I would need. So I made geometry. That's just the way I rolled. Um, so with that, let's let's get into it, and we will hide all this other stuff and focus in on this little bit here. And as you may recall. I have this geometry that is my is going to serve as my guide for how I want to style the hair, and we're gonna we want to make kind of um, an area part of this big kind of bang that's coming down that's framing her face here. So we're gonna focus in on this front area here. Okay, let's make some hair. Grabbing our little hair shell, activate XGen create new description and this time I'm going to give it a quick name this is, we'll call this long long mid oh I don't know left and then I'll copy that name over to the collection all right so we want to use splines um, for the primitives under the generate we're going to use randomly across surface that's the primitives and our and we're going to control the primitives by placing and shaping guides so splines randomly across surface placing and shaping guides and hit create okay we are now in xgen the first thing i'm going to do is check my renderer set to viewport 2.0 the others will work, but viewpoint gives you viewport 2.0 gives you a better kind of preview of the um, anisotropic shader here. So up here we have sculpt guides, and we have add or move guides, right? So let's add a guide, and I'm just going to add a couple for now, just just these four. Don't need too many. Um, we can we can duplicate and we can move them later. 
so less is more in the situation because it's going to be easier to control a few right okay so if we activate the uh, preview we see this is what we get you know the they're focused over here and kind of dissipating away from the guides uh, that's cool uh, we can turn off i'm going to just go down here and turn off tube shading and we'll dial up the uh, density a little bit let's say five q okay so these aren't very long all right so the q key will enable us and i'm going to hide the uh, primitives the q key um, will enable us to select all our primitives um, fyi that would be uh, let's see windows ui toolbox my toolbox kind of doesn't like to play nicely but that's our little select button right there okay so with the primitives selected or the guide selected my, my bad the guides are selected under the primitives we're going to go down to set length right and i'm going to dial this up to oh let's say uh 25 and there we go now we've got now we've got something we can work with Alrighty, and um, also, as you may recall, I have in this scene, I have a uh, guide here on my layer, right? So I can, so we're we're focusing on this this front bang here. Um, the top of the bang is going to be a separate um, description, so we're going to layer it. So we've already got short here underneath, and we're going to layer this kind of long bang kind of coming from the mid midway upper scalp here so we'll turn that back off that's the goal anyway um cool so with that we now want to turn to our sculpt guide brush and actually the brush is a little hard to see so i am going to change my background color a little a little lighter there we go so now you can see the guide the uh, brush and we can grab these guys and pull them down it's pretty good at figuring out which one you're trying to select so that's nice i'll turn my guide here on again for a minute and let's yeah let's bring them in there now you'll notice my guides are a little bit janky they're a little bit kind of faceted you know um, that's easy enough to fix. So, um, right next, to, right above set length. Excuse me. We have rebuild. All right. So our CV count is currently five. Let's dial it up. Oh, let's try. Let's try. I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, eight. Don't be too crazy. There you go. Okay. So now it's now they're a little smoother. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um, and we can just start tuning those a little better. Turn this off to the side here. Sometimes it helps just to select an individual strand. Sculpt guides. Now, obviously, you'd probably want to make turn, uh, you know, assign hotkeys. You know, your own pref preferences as far as hotkeys. I, I for these demos, um, a I'm lazy, so I tend to to kind of delay assigning hotkeys and B I think it helps for the demo to kind of see where these brushes are so that's why I kind of tend to go the long route as opposed to um, having a whole bunch of convenient hotkeys that's my excuse anyway so sculpt by sculpt guides brush and we just oopsie pull you around there there you go sweetie yeah starting to get there Do the same with these guys, and I want to kind of bring them, bring them all to the kind of the, approximately the same point in space, right? So that the the guides, Q key, sculpt, guides brush, and we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So if I. Uh, over the X Gen window again, and we're going to hit the um, 
update XGen preview and you get an idea yeah, now it's starting, it's starting to look like here right um, FYI if you if you see something like this it means you're probably in the default legacy renderer so just go up to v4 2.0 I'm actually I'm way back into Maya 2017 right now um, but uh, so if you're using a later version you may not have the option anywho um, maybe keeps things simpler so I'm just gonna so remember that the um, XGen does not update um, automatically so you kind of have to you know so if you want to see what the effect is you know so that makes it a little tedious um, at the moment but um, no doubt things will improve with time um, so we can turn off those guides turn them on um, yeah but that's that's starting to look like like something right I like that okay so a little earlier I mentioned that less is more when it comes to these guides so um, supposing I'd like to flesh this out a little bit more what we can do at this point with the Q key uh, select one of these guides go up here to your add or move guides button and activate it and now with this this guide selected if we click over here it's going to essentially copy that guide Q okay I'm going to select that one and maybe I want to flesh this little ear out here and let's copy it over here but maybe I want to move it a little bit so control key down and you can move it around so you get kind of the effect you want yeah cool and uh, maybe I don't really want that one over there so I'll just hit it and delete it and Bob's your auntie you're still getting some hair strands over here because it's just kind of you know it's just dissipating from around the primitives okay so let's say you know I'm reasonably happy with that and now we need to take our uh, primitives here and turn them into hair cards so similar to last week where we did the short here um, but we're going to do a little bit of a variation um, so last week when we captured our our hair cards we turned off face camera and and we grabbed the hair cards kind of in a static position in space so this time we're going to use we're going to actually leave face camera on and what that's going to do is is it's going to um, give us the normals based on the camera um, as opposed to uh, combing the normals you know us later so here we go first thing we need um, to craft some cards from our primitives here so right now they're they're very thin right um, and uh, I will start by dialing the density down so let's say like 0.5 and okay so now it looks pretty sparse and um, you know something more realistic once you know when you've got a whole head of hair obviously you can't have too many cards because it's going to get super expensive so we're going to make them nice and thick and utilize an alpha channel, right? So um, under the width, so primitives and right under length, you find width. Let's dial that up to two. There you go. So now, now we have some hair cards or something approximating what we want for hair cards. And they're facing the camera. So no matter which way I turn the object, they always appear to be the same width because they're always facing the camera. Okay. So the tr so with this approach, bearing in mind that the results will be facing the camera, you want to position the um, the hair cards, you know, kind of where you expect them to kind of, you know, the average, where you want the average angle of the hair cards to be. Uh, so that takes a little bit of kind of trial and error, a bit of uh, artistic judgment there. So I'm going to say kind of about side on for this clump. Right, so now once we've got our hair cards set up the way we want them, we're going to go up to this tool here called Select Primitives. You may remember that from the last session. Activate that and drag a box around all our primitives, and they turn green like the Hulk, meaning they're active. Okay, I'm going to drag that window out of the way for a minute. Now holding the space bar down to get your kind of main marking menu, um, if you look down here, you'll find this generate menu 
and if we go down to here you see convert XGN primitives to polygons select that and you get this option box you know you might recall this from the last session when we were making shorter here uh, we'll leave convert uh, selected primitives on and combine combine mesh meaning we're just going to get one mesh for all the hair cards if you turn it off you get individual meshes which you know you may want um, placing UV tiles this time we're going to leave this on and as you know you may have figured out that means it's going to make a tile so it's going to make a page of UV tiles and randomly assign different cards to different tiles so that's nice so we can therefore we can get some variety in our hair we don't have to have just one texture or have to manually assign them so I'm going to leave that on and click convert and there we go so right now we have both the X gen and the polygons in, in the, the same view so we'll go down to the outliner pull the outliner up here and this little this little button here this is this is our X gen um, I'll hide the primitives for a sec the uh, polygons this is our X gen kind of collection and we can hide that and then turn back on the polygon so now we're just looking at our our final hair cards right and you'll see that they're nice and soft looking right so we've got the the normals based on the camera and they're nice and averaged out um, so that's great so we'll get some nice soft fluffy here we don't have to comb it like the uh, previous example all right let's take a look at our UVs here so I'll grab my hair cards and I'm going to assign a little color guide that I created for the purposes, the demo purposes here, so that you can see the XGen has randomly assigned um, the different cards to um, various quadrants in the zero to one space that it has created, right? So, you know, here we've got a, a little UV shell stack of uv shells there look you can see it's separate and you'll also notice um i've i've darkened the roots i put a little gradient on my texture guide so you can see that all the roots all the cards are consistently orientated with the roots at the bottom of the page and the tips down here um, at the top of the page so if i were, for example just grab the uvs along the bottom of the page here you'll see that they show up at the roots and that is very important the reason for that is that we're going to apply a, what's called an anastrophic shader for the here when we get this in a game engine right and the anastrophic shader is going to create a long streaky highlight that is going to be based on the orientation of the UVs so that is why it's very important that your UVs be orientated consistently roots at the bottom uh, you know, tips at the top, and, and then uh, our little anastrophic highlight will travel in a consistent direction across our here. So there we go. All right. So finally, I just wanted to show you guys. I've made a made a, a quick test. Well, I wouldn't say quick. I made a test um, here page. Um, this is basically this is basically the um, the kind of the final. Uh, here here texture page I used for my shoe model um, with a, a slightly different color on it and so you can see kind of the results you start to see the results anyway here so it's starting to you know starting to look like here because you have you know you know not just one um, little texture but multiple ones randomly assigned and next gen is taking care of that for us along with the normals so fantastic you know we're, we're getting there so this this is going to live on top of the short here that we created last week and I, um, I would you know ultimately I would finish up you know with layering some here on top of this to create the part etc next session we'll look at making the textures for the haircuts using fiber mesh and ZBrush um, and I think in the future I'm gonna do I'm in the coming months I'm planning to do some some new videos kind of break away from the series a little bit and do some new characters um anywho if you like to get hold of the model featured in this video series please check out my new gumroad page um also you could kind of help support the channel if you like the videos and whatnot um it's pretty modest right now but i do have one package available for download which features the high-res zbrush model the marvelous designer files uh marmoset scene 
um, avatars, all that good stuff. Um, anywho, um, that's all for this session. So until next time, happy modeling. Ciao.